Welcome to my 10th masterclass, which will be devoted to sculpture today and uh, also the next two classes. And um, I would like to start with the gender, gender neutral artist, um, unknown anonymous Chinese artist who um, created this work. And this work was, um, let's say, adopted by an artist who thought it was beautiful. And the main characteristic of this work is that it has been shaped by nature, by water, and not by a human being. So the one of the the ideas. The basis of this work is that the artist distances himself from his or her ego and adopts a found shape. The shape itself, the, the object, is, is put into a pedestal, a sockel made especially for the stone, a pedestal which has the negative shape of the end of the stone and as such the artist determines the direction in which you will contemplate the stone because you can also show the stone like this or you might try to look at it from this in this way but the artistic intervention mainly consists of sculpting this negative shape and proposing this position. Some stones have two or three sockles, indicating that you can see them in different positions. As you can see, the stone is perforated. The negative volumes are as important as the positive ones. As you can also see, the object talks about um, adding and taking away material, shaping matter, not shaping it consciously or intentionally. Um, and whereas we think we are seeing a stone, a sturdy object that resists time and transience, the shape in itself evocates smoke. And also the pedestal has the shape of running water or a cloud. So I think we, th we suppose we are looking at a stone, but we are really looking at water, at something which is liquid. And indeed, if we think of the famous um, woodcut of Hokusai, in which we see the fishermen on the on the waves and the big waves and the Fujiyama in the background, we might think as a Western person that the 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 waves symbolize movement and life and transience, and the mountain symbolizes God or eternity or steadiness. Um, but I don't think so. I believe the mountain in the back is also a wave but it's a slow wave. And this is what we can see here, it's a slow wave, and not only the shape in itself in, indicates um, fluidity, it, it has to be seen in the moving sunlight, and when we look at it, the shape continually changes. The, 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 the shadows change and in that respect I think this stone and this form of art is very close to what Rembrandt did. Um, it's an artwork about light and shadow and uh, how light can make things emerge, appear and how the absence of light makes it disappear but also how shadows can suggest volume, life and figures because if you look at this 
stone from this point of view, for example, one might see the head of an eagle. If you look at it from another position, suddenly you see the silhouette of a lady. Um, it can be a dancing lady, it can be a young farmer boy. It can be anything really. It's, it's a structure that allows you to project on it. So as I told you, principally the artist does not intervene, but when he or she intervenes, the traces of the chisel are left clearly visible. And so the artist tells you, I have intervened here. Maybe I was wrong, you can see what I did, but I think it was necessary. It's a very humble way of coping with things. Now I would like to put it in the sunlight again and then hope that if I turn the object slowly, you will understand firstly that you can look at it from all sides and that's why these stones are called scholar stones in Chinese, gongshi, because they invite somebody to contemplate during his whole lifetime about one single object which appears to be stable or static but which talks about transience, ephemerity um, and the movement I do now, I, turning around the sculpture is something one might do uh, deciding to want to look at it in a different way for a certain time but it's also, of course, what happens when the sun um, changes position because of the revolution of the earth. So this is a gongshi, a scholar stone from China. I consider it to be one of the highest art forms we ever have created, especially because the artist intervenes as little as possible and um, um, I think it also equals our highest paintings um, with respect to their capacity to solidify ephemerity.